We're going to walk you through the necessary steps to make sure that you can implement memory integrity on your Windows operating system. This is part two of our video series. If you haven't seen part one, I recommend you start there before proceeding on with this video. Core isolation is the umbrella encompassing both memory integrity and kernel stack protection. Both of these security features should be implemented for maximum protection on your Windows operating system. A little background warning from Microsoft, not all applications and device drivers are compatible with memory integrity. This incompatibility can lead to boot failure and the blue screen of death. So starting with memory integrity, come down to the Windows taskbar and go under security, go to settings. And you can see now that memory integrity and kernel hardware stack protection are both off. We're going to attempt to turn this on and it will not turn on and it says review and learn more. So we're going to click on the learn more and not much here other than to tell you that you need to resolve your driver incompatibilities. So we'll close that. We'll review the incompatible drivers and you notice here there are no incompatible drivers listed. Earlier in the video, we mentioned the part one of the video series on this. Highly recommend you do the part one first, and especially if you have drivers here listed before proceeding on with this video. We're going to come down to the Windows taskbar and run registry editor as an administrator. Editing your registry can cause your system to become corrupt and not boot. There's five things we recommend before you edit your registry, and one of them is create a system restore disk USB preferably that has all the system utilities on it to boot your system in case your registry is corrupted. Do a cloud backup of all your files along with a local hard drive backup and a local hard drive image backup of your complete operating system and all of your applications. And finally, create a recent restore point. If you're interested on how to do these, we have a link to a video series. Click on the video above. So proceeding on here, we're going to go to this location and all of these Locations, commands, everything that we mentioned in the video are in the video description. You go to this location inside the registry, and here you can see we have block auto enablement, and it's set to one, which means memory integrity is being blocked. This is under the hypervisor code integrity section. So we're going to open that. We're going to change the value to zero because we don't want it to be blocked. We're going to come down to enabled. Right now it's not enabled. We're going to change the value of that to one to enable it. And once we do that, we're going to restart the system. Come back down to the taskbar, go back into the defender icon, click on the device security, go under core isolation details. And now you can see it is on and it's saying managed by administrator because we forced it in the registry and that is the method we recommend. Okay, down here below under the kernel stack protection, you can see that it is set to off. So now we're going to go into that section of the video on how to get this fixed. We try to turn it on. We get a Windows security notice over here that it cannot be turned on. Dismiss that. It says resolve driver incompatibilities. And once again, we have no listed drivers. So we're going to close out of this. Next, we need to turn on data execution and prevention. It protects your computer by preventing code from being executed that is not intended for code execution. But to do that, we come down to the Windows taskbar, run the systems property advanced exe, run it as an administrator. Under the advanced tab and settings, click that. Go to the data execution tab and you can see it's grayed out. And the reason it's grayed out is because we ran this command at the admin system prompt to be always on. And that's what I prefer is to have it always on so it cannot be turned off here. If you ever want to turn it back on, you just run this command here and it will re-enable the ability to control it through the GUI interface. Once that's turned on, we'll go to the next step here, which is to talk about memory management feature override. It's going to enable all the kernel protected mode features and prevent code from being executed from memory that is marked as non-executable. We have to do this inside the registry. So we'll go down to the taskbar and run registry editor again as an administrator. We're going to go to the following location. Again, this is in the video description. Once we go there, we can see the feature settings override under memory management. And we're going to set that to a value of nine. 
There's more details in the video description if you're interested in what these settings mean. Close out of here. Next, we're gonna go on to the kernel hardware enforced stack protection. This is basically preventing changes to the temporary stack. So do that, we'll come back down here and we're gonna run the registry editor again as an administrator. We're gonna to go to the following location. Once we do that, underneath kernel shadow stacks, we're going to take and make sure that it's enabled is set to one and was enabled by is set to one. Once you've done that, close this out, restart the computer and come back down here, device security. Now you can see that they are both on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the homes before we proceed on with the video because there's an important thing here I wanna show you. It's more related to the Windows login. You can see we still have a red X here. The reason we have this red X is because we eliminated the Windows Hello pin and we forced the login with a hardware security key. There's a link to a video above. Really neat way to log in to your Windows system. Prevents anybody that does not have the key from being able to get into your computer. In summary, to activate core isolation, we determined what the minimum system requirements were for activation. Did a complete backup of the system data and recovery options. Changed the registry for hypervisor code integrity. Turned on the data execution prevention. Made a registry change for memory management. And also a registry change for kernel shadow stacks. And that changed our situation from both memory integrity and stack protection being off to being on. This concludes our video of how to implement core isolation under Windows. If you have any questions, post them below. Please like, share, and subscribe. This supports our efforts in helping others with technology and have a great and wonderful automation day.